when I like last week when I tried to touch on the screen, you're like, it's not, it's not an Apple product, Peter. <laughs> Don't touch my head, it's really sore. It's got sunburn. I just got back from holiday. Some of us went away to the weekend yeah. to um, see the sun. These part-timers. It wasn't yeah. some of us, it was just me. Yeah. Some of us stayed in England and watched movies. Well, I, I managed to watch a movie. Yes. I'm quite impressed with that. Oh, did you on a plane? No. Mm. Did you watch your homework over the weekend? No. I was away. Right. And I, I don't have um, one of those VPN firewall things which enables me to stream abroad so I didn't I just played golf this is your excuse. are you coming to me with a dog story about the dog ate your homework that is my dog ate my homework story James I didn't do my homework I'm really sorry but it does mean that we have a guest reviewer of Nikki today she can tell us all don't about the movie don't don't backtrack do no no, no. Do that doesn't really work easy. with me young man <laughs> alright I'll go and see over to you to start the popcorn pundits papas Popcorn Pundits Podcast Episode 22 Day Thursday The 28th 8th Of February March April We're in 2024 at some point We're in the first quarter was very very smooth Well done Thank you Nobody's noticed Are you feeling okay today? Nope it's not going to last I long. I don't think so. It's going to go left field. <laughs> I made an aubergine gratin before I came here. Did you? Yeah, I'm very excited about it. You're not even on number 10 before, <laughs> you, before you've gone off piece. He hasn't That's even like, said what even... the podcast is about. <laughs> <laughs> this is well, your, Shall we introduce ourselves? Okay, because we, we haven't done to. that. This is your Popcorn Pundits. It's your weekly update and review of the latest cinema releases and also some homework that Peter doesn't do. Yeah, we do the top ten, then we yes. review a film in a cinema, That's and right. then normally I would review a film, but I was doing other stuff. Yes. Sorry. Doing other stuff. At least, I, at least I didn't watch half a film and then stop. That's right, yes, yeah, so because I give you a decent movie. Uh, so I'm James Michael Mulcrone, and last year I saw how many films at the cinema? 67, 67 films at the, at the cinema, and then another three at home. 3,000 at home. <laughs> uh, this there there this isn't year. a movie you haven't watched. This year, however... We have seen at the cinema twenty eight films, I think. Wow. That's that... not bad three months in. It's about twenty eight, yeah. I think it's about twenty eight. And does films. that include re watching something? Is that is that or individual films? No, I think that's individual yeah. films. Because I'm gonna see June the second mm-hmm. again so tomorrow for the yeah, third time. Yeah. 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 And I didn't even count the homework that I've given you as well. So that's so if anybody can give reviews or point of view about the latest cinema releases or films at home, we are the ones to give it. I hate to say, James, you, you do have a very, very good knowledge when it comes to movies. Bless your heart. Yeah. I wondered where that was Thank going. You so much. Right. I've got <laughs> hurt. That's <laughs> amazing, and that's all I know, really. I'm not going to lie, you've already gone off tangent again. Why are we doing this podcast? We are doing this podcast. Why are we doing this podcast? <laughs> Don't ask me direct questions like that. We are trying to get people to fall back in love with going That's to correct. the cinema. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes. Well done, Peter. Saving the and day. In the, that one. And in, the, in this generation of box set binging, we're yes. trying to get people to go back to the, the, the classic. And also, f- shut up! <laughs> also- <laughs> Mom! <laughs> that. Yeah. Because what really annoys me is people speeding up films when they're watching it. It's been, like it's been like listening to podcasts. Well, I was going to say that. I didn't know whether to say that or not. Oh, no. Because one, one of our biggest fans yes, does he that. Listens. He listens to us on one and a half. I can't imagine how <laughs> high-pitched your <laughs> laugh and my laugh are. Oh, God. Now, apparently, it half time. It apparently it pitches it. Oh, does it? It does. So what oh, we right. need to do for Lawrence, we need to talk <laughs> louder. We'll release a special episode look, just yeah. for him. You look so wrong. That was, yeah, that was like Zoolander. <laughs> okay, so on today's episode, yes. I'm going to do the top ten. You are. And we're going to try and get through the whole thing without ending up somewhere random. Yes. And then we are going to talk about the film that we went to see at the cinema this week, which we'll say in a minute, won't, won't we? We will. Yeah. Um, and then Nikki's going to do her first full-on review. Hmm. Happy days. Yeah. So, at number 10 is Romeo and Juliet from the Met Opera. Haven't seen it. It's not a film. <laughs> number 9 film. is Imaginary. Which I've imagined I've been to see it four times so far and still haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet either. No. Oh, we're going to go and see it though, aren't we? One day we will see it. There was a different trailer that, that for was it. If. 
Oh, it was if. That's yeah, if right. I'm completely. Yeah, I keep yes. doing that. I know you do. Um, I think they've got a very similar storyline. Uh, n- number eight is The Motive and The Cue, which is a National Theatre live not a movie. production. Not so a movie. Sam Mendes directed, though. Did he? Yeah. Oh. He, does, he does quite a lot of He um, does. Yeah. Good old Sammy. I'm going to get a sentence out of my own mm-hmm. today. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> number seven, Late Night with the Devil. <laughs> I'm seeing that on Friday night and I cannot wait. Yeah, I'm going to come with you and hold your hand. It looks really super scary. Uh, number six, Bob Marley, One Love. That looks really scary too, doesn't it? <laughs> it's got a jab in it. <laughs> uh, number five, Migration. Number, it's, that is holding on. Oh, isn't you it? know exactly. what? Top five in its eight weeks. It went from one holiday to another. It's, it's like it's migrated from one, one half term oh, to another. Do you know they did that? I quit. Number four, Wicked Little Letters. I'm so pleased it's still in the top ten. Yeah, absolutely right. Mm. Uh, number three is Immaculate that we reviewed last week. We did. Seems Bangers. To be, seems to be doing all right, doesn't yep. it? Yeah, that's it. And I'm I'm quite surprised that um, June the 2nd has mm. been knocked off top spot. And, um, yeah, it's now number two. Well, I mean, Ghostbusters does have a massive following. And, you know, at the end of the day, what? You just plot spoil. <laughs> <laughs> And number one is Ghostbusters. Is Frozen, it? Frozen oh, who'd have guessed? Who'd have th- um, <laughs> the, the sad thing about this week's top ten yeah. is it's <gasps> no longer Wonka. a Chalamet sandwich. It oh, isn't. Yeah, no, I noticed that. Oh, it'll you, come back again. I give you Chalamet homework. It'd be Chris. Yeah, you did. I did oh. do it. Anyway, we'll talk about that later. I'd say there's only so much Chalamet that you can take, but I don't well, think there is. That's Mrs. Chalamet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it's Mrs. Mrs. Chalamet. <laughs> I thought you said Shanley. <laughs> wow, there we go. So that's your top ten. So that's, yeah, for cheap rent. that's this week's top ten. <laughs> what is it with you two? I go away for one weekend and the world falls apart. Well, All fallen together. together. Yeah. I'll just be the cameraman from now on. Okay. Anyway, so by yes. hook or by crook, James and I went to see Ghostbusters this we week. Did. did you go and see it? No, I didn't. Why did you not go and see it? Because uh, I didn't. Why would you have gone and seen this? Because... You like a bit of Paul Rudd, don't you? Fitty Mc... Oh, yeah, and Paul Rudd. Oh, do you like Paul Rudd as well? I love Paul Rudd, especially as Ant-Man, because he's the greatest Ant-Man in the world. Yes. Yes, indeed. But she also loves the English... um, She also loves James Adcaster as well. Adcaster. Yeah, him as well. Adcaster. Yeah, he's um, he's he's a bit of a star in our household as well. Yeah. Well, your household obviously has the greatest taste. That's because you're there. Yes, let's let's just go. With this. <laughs> <laughs> really uncomfortable in my. I didn't see it here today. I'm not quite sure what's going on. Anyway, stop it. So, right, okay, shall we I wonder un- what film you saw this week. Mm, I we, wonder. We saw Ghostbusters. Yes, we did. Frozen Empire. Yeah, and I didn't think I was going to get to see it this week, so no. I um, I managed to squeeze it in. So I haven't made any notes at all. So we're going to talk about if you're talking about actors or anything like that, you're going to, have to do all the good stuff. Do you not think Frozen Empire makes it sound like it's a mashup of Frozen and Ghostbusters? <laughs> or no, is that just me? That's just for you. Frostbusters. Frostbusters. That's just for you. Ghosting. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go on then. Tell us all about it. Hi. So, hi, my name is James oh Michael Micron. Yes. So, the, <laughs> the Spengler Mike. family have returned, but this time not in their ghost, not in their dust farm, which they were in the last episode, but they, they're now in New York. In New York. Yes. Do you say like that? What, New why York. Why have you gone Uruguayan? You have to say it like that, like you've got a hot dog in your mouth and you're about to hit somebody. New York. Yoik. Yeah. Anyway. New York. So, oh, they've, 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 they've at the end of the last instalment of uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife, they were obviously in the dust farm where the Spangler Senior passed away and it was all very excited at the end. And, Spoiler alert. And, and so on and so forth. Well, Edie, we're watching the second one. I'm not going down that road. So the second <laughs> film, uh, they are nestled in nicely uh, in, their, in, in, in the iconic um, Ghostbusters headquarters. And it's all shiny again. Uh, one of the old Ghostbusters, obviously, absolutely minted, invested lots of money into the Ghostbusters Part Two, Part Two, and they're out and about, and they're they're they're, they're busting ghosts because busting makes them feel good. I was going to do. I was going to do it as well. That way, yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So it's so. What I really like about this movie, it starts off 
straight on the feet, bang, straight in there, as if you, you as if you were halfway through an adventure chasing off the ghosts. The young, the new, the new Ghostbuster team, which is obviously Paul Rudd. Um, <laughs> he looks the same age as, as the, the young ones. Yeah, exactly. And you've got Kamal, who's the mum, and then you've got the and then you've got the children, which is obviously um, is it Phoebe? Is that his yep. Yeah. So you got you got Phoebe, who was a much obviously a much younger actor in the last film because that's how time works. <laughs> but now she's older. That, that, that is how time that's works. That's how time works. Oh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. You learn something new it's, every day. It's incredible, isn't it? However, yeah. because Paul Rudd looks no different. So yeah. I was going to say Paul Rudd yeah, no, it doesn't work because he's with literally Paul frozen yeah, he in the age. empire. He's just getting younger. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The younger actors, particularly Phoebe, and particularly uh, the young actor who played podcast significantly older and, and in fact I was watching Afterlife this week as a little recap before I went to see the, the second part this week and I thought them, and that was one thing I clocked straight away I thought these two young actors are going to look considerably older in the second movie and that always feels a bit weird for me personally yeah but I mean they're 15 they're 15 hmm. and yeah 15 in this movie that's right and um, and that kind of brings in new storylines it does. doesn't it which it I does. thought they, they handled pretty well in this it does however there were were there were certain moments I felt that particularly the Phoebe character they were hiding her they were they were hiding her body because it's obviously she's a, she, she's a lot more they're trying to keep her as a young fifteen-year-old girl in them because she was sporty. She's a nerd. You know, there's nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing. You, you, you never look at her and think she's going to be a. It's not the same outfits as they wore in Immaculate last week, is what you're suggesting. Exactly what I'm trying to say to you. And everything was hidden to the point where every spot you can see her doing this. Yeah. Does that make sense? But I mean, That's I think she's, she's meant to be that yes. kind of tomboyish type character. Exactly. Isn't she, I think. And, exactly. Um, yep. Yeah. yeah. However, I just thought that was a bit weird for me personally. Okay. Okay. So, the uh, story starts off, the Spangler family are out and about. Uh, Paul Rudd's now, obviously, the stepdad now. And they're, 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 they're sort of going in that sort of direction with, with his relationship with the family as well. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a glorious, I think it's a glorious uh, sci-fi adventure movie. And you, you get exactly what you want from it as a whole movie. So I think they're pitching it at different people. Aren't they are. They? So they're trying to create mm. a new generation of Ghostbusters fans, they are. Mm. and whilst they're adding mm. a level of nostalgia for, for those of us where 1984 or whenever the original was That's out um, was like the biggest movie other than ET yeah. e. that we saw. There's not we much kids. more competition, there. and that, that, I think at the time there's also um, Beverly Hills Cop Two as well. Yeah, but that's that's set, set for a slightly older age group. I agree completely. And they've they've created some lovely little bits of stuff for the hmm. new fans to kind of love and, well, have, and have as their own. And us and us oldies get to kind of see like all the original Ghostbusters in different guises going through this. Don't we? I agree with you. However, what I was going to highlight, and I didn't do any research, and didn't whether Nikki could do a quick quick googling for us. I was under the uh, as, as the film went along, obviously they're introducing lots of new characters, lots of new layers to the Ghostbusters world and so on and so forth. Yeah. And as, as the film went along, they are, there's some fantastic sort of cameos by comedians going in there and they were, they were building on the, as you mentioned before, the, the, the sort of the original Ghostbusters, the new Ghostbusters that were in the last movie and they're introducing new Ghostbusters on top of that as well, which obviously parts of different departments now. I get the impression what they're doing is they're sourcing characters from um, their television uh, cartoon series and introducing those into this film. Oh, right, OK. So, I, don't, I don't know anything about that. So there was some... There's the, 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 I think the costumes are very, very important in this movie because you have, you, you've obviously got the original costumes yeah. from the original movies and then you've got the new red costumes. And I think the new red costumes are actually from the Ghostbusters cartoon Series. Yeah, okay, yeah, because because the, um, the the overalls, the brown famous yeah. overalls, yeah. are really a bit of an afterthought in this, mm. aren't they? And yeah. they're, they're not used in the first couple of ghost huntings. That's right, exactly. And it's um, yeah. So you, so you, so you, they're, they're 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 busting ghosts. Everything's great, and then it's the, the story itself is not too complex. It's pretty much identical to every other Ghostbusters film. Exactly. <laughs> so an object is found. Uh, and uh, a density, uh, some sort of ghost is is released from said object, causing havoc across the whole of New York, freezing everything. Pretty much exactly as it, what it mentions in the trailer. Yes. So there's nothing unusual about the the premise of the film, and you get exactly what it says on the tin. 
what I did like were the cameos. I love the, the two, particularly the two comedic cameos where you've got uh, Acaster and you've also got uh, Nadine. Yeah. Coming in I as thought Nadine was brilliant. He was brilliant as 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 as, as, a, as a hold of fire. I think we need to discuss James Acaster in this film. Go for it. I thought he was terrible in this. I disagree with you completely. I, I think he was a shining light. Do you? Because I I, we love Not him too. as an actor mm-hmm. and, and as, a, as a comedian, rather. Yeah. And then as soon as he started speaking this, it kind of reminded me like when, when you go to Disney World yes. and you get to be in front of a camera and yes. then you're, you're the only non-professional actor. Yes. And then you get to watch your thing back and you go, oh, I'm terrible. That, that's what it kind of felt like yeah. to me. Even like later on in the film, he was speaking, I'm just like, James, do better. That's... No, he said, I disagree. I think he was brought in. Because everybody was so upbeat and so like, yeah, ghosts and blah, blah, blah. And he was like, yeah, it's ghosts, isn't it? So let's get on with it. And there was, that, there was obviously that very strong British accent that he, that he put, that he doesn't yeah. disguise at all. So he doesn't try to be American, which is quite nice for a change. Yeah. Um, and he's just dry, just dry English humour just thrown in there. And I think it's a nice olive in your, in your martini. Fair enough. I don't agree at all. I love him, but I hated him in this. Good. But however, Nadine was brilliant. <laughs> Was absolutely brilliant. He was like an accidental hero, wasn't he? Even even when he did his heroic bit towards the end, he was still an accidental hero. He absolutely yeah. had no clue what yeah. he was doing. So and what I really liked was bringing back Walter Peck. Show me. Walter Peck was the uh, he was the the original. Um, he was the he was in the original movies. He he was trying to get the Ghostbusters. Uh, disbanded and he was trying to get the guys oh, yeah, invested yeah, 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 yeah. and he obviously so the, brought him back again the, the mayor as the continuation of the anti-Ghostbusters boo <laughs> in yeah. that pantomime sort of way my only felt my only misguided thought about that was that you looked at him and you thought he's obviously been crowbarred into the movie he's not took care of himself that well you know there's, there's obviously some sort of ambulance waiting at the side of the screen waiting for him to take he didn't look good <laughs> at all same with Bill Murray much. Well, no, but Bill Murray still acts exactly the same as he did before. Yes. If you if you clo- if you listen to him, yes. it would still be exactly the same. And like you know, and he still does the same types of things. He He's still the kind of the chaotic one of all he of them, does. which I really liked. Did you think that maybe they tried to shoehorn a bit too much into this? I yes, I do. I think they, I think it was. I think they tried to make a gigantic cake, and there was too much ingredients in it. Yeah. However, I also felt that they cut loads of bits out that you've missed. I thought the editing was very disjointed. I thought the animation was pretty poor. I, t- I didn't mind the, uh, the animation being quite... Re- it was purposely retro, I felt. Did you? I, I did so feel I, the purposely retro. I didn't. So, the, so for me, the mm. opening scene, because you were talking about the shiny new um, right. fire station, I didn't, I, didn't yeah. see, I didn't see it as a shiny new fire station mm. at all, because they're, they're repairing it kind of the whole yeah. way through. Mm. But the way it's CGI'd at yes. the beginning, I just thought it was really poor CGI. Okay. That's, that's how I felt about yeah. that. And then I thought the main villain mm. was also awful. Well, I didn't think he was scary at all. There was no... Reason to be scared of him. Not in it. I mean, if you remember Marshmallow, Man was, more, Marshmallow Man was more terrifying, well, I felt. Yeah, but then also, um, you know, the cruel, cruel, cruel... Uh, yes. I forgot the name of yes. the, the, uh, the villain in the first one, or the, the yes. alien, um, the spooky wookie in the first one. Yes. Um, but th- that the whole... You know, top of the skyscraper. Yeah. You know, when they had like all the ghosts kind of flying around, there were that's so right. many different characters of ghosts and all Ooh, that. You know, that's like when they got released into the that's into right. the wild. Yeah. Then you had the gatekeeper and, the, right. and the key person. They were trying to tick all the boxes from all previous movies. Yeah, they were. Didn't and, make that much sense. But yeah, but that the original built up to a beautiful crescendo, mm. and, and it was just amazing. Yeah. I felt this one really lacked that. I agree. Yeah. Absolutely, I, th- I think I think I'll definitely go watch it again, and I will definitely put it in my Ghostbusters film to watch. You know, when I'm doing a little sort of Ghostbusters sort of thing at home. But you're right; it's it's not as strong as it could have been. No, exactly. And it was produced by Dan Aykroyd That's and right. starring Dan Aykroyd. Yes, I thought he was pretty good in it. He was. He was all right. I thought all the originals were pretty good, they actually. Were. To be honest with you, where was Gordy Weaver? That's what I want to know. Yeah, because she was in the last one. She was. Oh, was she? Mm-hmm. I thought it meant the first one. Briefly. Yeah. Um, no, so, yeah, so I, I thought they were really good. I thought Phoebe as a character was brilliant, actually. Yep. I thought her brother was a little bit disappointing and a bit underused. With the older brother. Yeah, yeah very much so, I agree. Yep. Yeah. I thought he was, he was almost there just as a little sidekick, almost. Pretty much. In a I way. I thought Paul Rudd was brilliant. He was very good. However, Mrs. however, 
you did know I did it with you noticed or not in the trailer yeah there is a very particular moment where they're on top of the building and there's obviously there's obviously cut away from uh, whatever demonic beings chasing after them but they're, they're leaning over the edge of the building it's all in the trailer and Paul Wood goes <laughs> it's not in the movie yeah it's not in the movie it's not in the movie and those sort of little things really really wind me up <laughs> that they, they promise you something in the trailer and they take it away from you in real life he does he does use the tagline though doesn't he he, he does, and he uses it with a plum. <laughs> no but Almost in the same sort of glee as when he was explaining about his panther uh, aftershave oh, yeah. <laughs> in, in Anchorman. He, he, holds that, he holds those moments really, really well. And, he, and, he, and, he, and, he, and the timing with him, is, he times it perfectly because he slows it down. The passionate idiot. Maybe it's yes. in the director's cut. Well, I'm hoping there's got to be lots. I'm hoping there's going to be lots of direct discussion. I hope there's going to be lots of, you know, goofs and sort of like outtakes mm. and so on and so forth. That's what I'm hoping for. Because it's, it's a long run. It's an hour and fifty-five minutes, mm. or an hour and fifty-four minutes. Yeah. And um, it didn't go. It didn't go slowly. But no. I, I kind of left it, and I was thinking. There's... I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't doing a Nicolas Cage high kick on the way out. Yeah. I was going. Yeah, busting makes me feel good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But but the first one, the afterlife, I thought they're back. This is brilliant. And I wanted to become a Ghostbuster. Yeah. So there we go. This one, not so much. I mean, good film. Good film. I think it was, we were spoiled with the first one. Um, it's uh, it's an Easter holidays. It is. Pick, it is. Go and yeah. see it. It's fantastic. Yeah. Would you like some facts? Yes, please. Uh, so the working title for this film was actually Firehouse. Obviously, after the Ghostbusters firehouse. Yeah, makes sense. Um, and Frozen Empire is dedicated to the late Ivan Reitman, who was the original director of the first two movies, who passed away 12th of Feb 2022. Oh, yeah, it says for Ivan as the... Yeah, yeah it, it does, yeah. Back. And exactly. then with reference to the animated series, um, the director and co-writer, Gil Keenan, has explained uh, why the up-and-coming sequel took inspiration from the real Ghostbusters, which was the animated series from the 80s rather than the 1989 you Ghostbusters 2. I said earlier on you were a genius. There's something gone, really wrong with me. Bloody <laughs> proved it. There's something However, really... Did you, did you wait till the end of the credits? Yes. Did you see it? The There was a first little snippet, wasn't it? There's only one snippet, isn't there? Is that what we're calling a snippet? Um. So they said... The truck stop. Hmm. Uh, we both do love Vigo from Ghostbusters 2, but we felt like because Goza made their return in Afterlife, the onus was on us to lead boldly into the unknown with creating our villain and go off map to discover their mythology and their story. Hmm. Uh, they said in an interview with comicbook.com that the follow up to 20, about the follow up to 2021 Ghostbusters Afterlife. Right. Well, the, the backstory so took, for yeah. the villain was brilliant. Yes, yeah, well, it was a so great they took it setup. All from yeah. the original animated series. Yeah, they which, just didn't deliver the villain. No. Which aired on Saturday mornings on ABC from 1986 to 1991. Hmm. Uh, and the real Ghostbusters spun off its own mythology from the hit 1984 comedy classic. There you go. There we go. Beautiful. Marked out of ten. Ooh. Are you ready, Nikki? Are you, are you, ready, are you poised on. to Let me just get it notes. up for you. Okay, it's up. Six. Six point seven. Six point two. Ooh. It's around about there, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. yeah. What's the average, darling? Uh, six point four five. So okay. six point five. Six point five, yeah. Um, okay. On Go IMDb, see it, though. It's actually six point five on IMDb. <laughs> This, How this weird is that? This episode after 21 failures, you've done one, and yeah, this is the second one, so oh, after yeah. 21, oh, yeah. um, that you've, you've nailed it, you've smashed it. Thanks. Yeah. How are we improving our scores? Well, Squiddy Weaver could have been in it. That would have been a good start. Uh, I think it made the story simpler. It felt to me like it was underproduced stylistically and financially. It felt to me like they didn't want to spend the money on the, on the CGI or mm. the depth of... The depth of characters, mm. which would have cost money. That, that's, the, that's what it felt like to me. And this, this is going to net bucket loads. It isn't is. it? It's, it's I... going to be watched by loads and loads of people. But I, it just, to me, it just kind of just lacked that kind of real kind of broad number of baddies. I felt it, 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 it was over-edited. 
And I also felt it lacked a little bit of heart. Whereas yeah, the first it did, one, it lacked... the first one, there was that heart wrenching moment where they, the obviously Spangler Senior was there, and it was all very like, oh, this is for them, and they're all back together again. This is great, and some of there wasn't that moment. There, there, there was no heart. There was no, they, they, they felt like there was no love on this. Whereas I felt the first one was made from love. Okay, um, I, yeah, I, I totally agree that there is there is a lack of hmm. heartbeat in this. Okay. Okay, well, Nikki McMickey. Yes. You went to see a Conan Brothers movie. I did. Over the weekend. What Conan Brothers movie was it? And, um, what, and what do you think? It was Drive Away Dolls. Hmm. So I went to see it with Middle Sister Smart. Yes. Um, and, yeah, it was interesting. How many? How how familiar are you with Conan Brothers movies, generally? Not majorly. Okay. I think I've seen a few. I mean, because they're all... Of a very similar, I'm sure you're quite familiar with Conan Brothers movies. Yeah, right? so Brother, we're out there. Yeah, there's, 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 there's a very Pacific and also Fargo. And yeah, there's, there's a very Pacific dialogue, style of dialogue, and it always it always sounds very Canadian. It always sounds very the 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 way they're they're able to communicate with each other. They all sound like they're from the same universe, and I always think it's quite interesting. It's always very dry, it's always very witty, and mm. it's always... There's always a, there's an undercurrent comic value where you feel like they want to laugh, but they don't quite laugh. It's interesting that you say that, because mm. my sister and I felt like we were the only ones laughing. Oh. There was... It wasn't full, it was probably half. Yes. Um, what, and... Half laugh or half full cinema? Half full, What's not it? half empty. Just checking. Just half a cinema. Yeah. Um... And some people did walk out um, did and not return. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. Well, I like um, that. So it stars uh, Margaret... <laughs> you always walk out, but you just always come back again. <laughs> yeah, I do. Unless it's any given yeah, Sunday. Uh, it stars Margaret Quayley, uh, who was also in Poor Things, and she played Felicity. Um, and she was also in the Netflix series Made. Was, was that the same actress? Is that right? Okay. Hmm. Um, and then it stars um, Geraldine... Viz Wanthan, I can't say her name, who was in the US version of uh, Bad Education. Right. Um, so it's, um, yeah, it's an interesting plot. So uh, Jamie regrets her breakup with her girlfriend while Marion needs to relax. In search for a fresh start, they embark on an unexpected road trip to Tallahassee and things go quickly awry when they cross paths with a group of inept criminals. Yeah, there's always an inept criminal. So we've seen the trailer for this quite yeah. a lot, haven't yeah. we? And, and Matt Damon's in it. Yeah. And Does it pretty much do what it says on the trailer? Um, I felt it was like Thelma and Louise on speed. Yeah, pretty much is what it says on the trailer. Yeah. 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 Um, but it did have, the trailer has, definitely has a go slap. lesbian, go yeah. lesbian yeah. But, also, but also a slapstick, sort of like, oh, I'm going to fall over. So. I mean, I, I don't mind a, a lesbian scene, but I do think it went slightly too extreme. Mm. Um, Which... James is actually talking, talking, talking yeah. about. <laughs> it was about 30 minutes, no joking. Um, yeah, it was just a bit... And there's certain clips which are a bit intense, is probably really? the best way to put it. I, actually, um, I said that to you last week, didn't I? That, yeah. That I thought it kind of felt like it was going to go on a... Yeah, a, and it stars that type of journey. Matt Damon, and there is a cameo from Miley Cyrus in there. Is there? Yeah. Hmm. Um, I actually would watch it again. Okay. Um, I gave it a seven point four. They do give it. They they do choose cracking soundtrack to their films. Yes, as well. they do yeah. like a good in a, in a Tarantino sort of style. Would you what 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 movies would you put for, for viewers Ooh. out there? What movies would you put it against? As in, you know, if you like this, you'd like that. Do you know what I would say? It's quite because it does say that it's like comedy uh-huh. and slightly thrillery, but I would say it was actually quite chick flicky. Okay. Good. Yeah, I right. would say it was chick flicky. So in a Thelma and Louise sort of style in that respect. Yeah, yeah, it was kind. Yeah, it was just like extreme Thelma and Louise. Okay. Like a raunchier Thelma and Louise is probably mm. the best way to put it. No Brad Pitt though. Thank no. goodness. That was his first role. I mean, oh no, what a shame. With his cowboy hat on. Yeah. And then get shot. Not, Davis. not a lot else. With Judy and, Davis. And then finally and get hair. shot. He had long hair in it. Not his chest, he didn't. No, that's very true. And a cowboy hat. <laughs> a cowboy hat. Jumping, jumping on a car bonnet. That's right. It's not the only, ju- that's the only jumping he did. <laughs> <laughs> um, and apparently, this is the first film directed by Ethan Cohen without the involvement of his brother Joel. Oh, I didn't know that. There we go. 
Interesting. We should definitely go and see this. I think we should. I do. actually think you two would enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. It'll be interesting to hear your views on it as well. I did, I did like the kind of the, the setup of like how they kind of because because when you watch a trailer, it does look like you're watching a, two different trailers of two mm. different films yeah. spliced together. Yeah. Because yeah. it's kind of like they're in a bar one moment and they're yeah. kind of like talking about, oh yeah, I've just broken up with my girlfriend. Yeah. You shouldn't be wearing that. And, yeah. and then all of a sudden, they're on like this like. Gee, we got a, we got we got something in a trunk and we it could be illegal. Type thing. Could what be. accents today, mate? Oh, no, oh, brilliant. I mean, I don't know why he went Australian then. <laughs> um, it also uh, stars oh, Beanie Scottish. Feedstein, Canadian. who is the sister, I believe, of Jonah Hill. Really? Apparently. Mm. Okay. Brilliant. So, what score have you given? Seven point four. Okay. So, and so you times recommend... by two divided by two. That's seven point four. Seven point four. Yay! Yeah. Good math. That's quick, wasn't it? <laughs> Good. So there, there are two films for you to watch at the cinema this week. So you've got Ghostbusters, Afterlife, you've got... To, so what films would you recommend at the, at the cinema this week, Peter? Uh, well, I, I would go and see Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire, because yeah. it, it's a good film, especially if you want something to do with the Kitty Winkle. Yes, sir. I'm off to see June Part de again for the third time, yeah. and, and I think that is a definite... You have to go and see it, at the and you should go and see it more than once, because yes. uh, the second time you see it... You see so much more, don't Yeah, you? it is. So much more. Do not see Immaculate. It's a waste of time. <laughs> if you haven't seen Wicked Little Letters, it's just... Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. The afternoon. it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. It's yeah. fantastic. Um, and then we're going to see um, Late Night with the Devil this week, which oh, I think is um, which is a, which is a good one to watch. Yes, I actually there's one coming out which is came out coming out. It came out yesterday, the twenty seventh. Um, it's called Mother's Instinct, and it stars Anne Hathaway and Jessica Chastain. Um, I've seen trailers for it. I, it. I it's quite it's interested me, so mm. I think I might go and see that because okay. Anne Hathaway is like. All over, I think Vogue magazine, and she's she's like she's doing a lot mm. of front covers. All of a sudden, she's popped yeah. up all over my Instagram. So um, that's probably Has she? why. Yes. Have you? Your I, I algorithm. Have, yeah, I must have mentioned her name at some point, and then bang, she's there. Bang. Oh, bang. Well, she was like that. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Bang. Oh. And how the way. Anyway, so. Petey's homework. There we go. Petey, look, Pete. I asked you to do some homework, Petey, and you didn't have time because you, you were hitting a ball with a stick. I was, yeah. I was it's some foreign up. land. <laughs> it's some foreign land. I asked you to um, to watch and review Bones and All, which was starring Timothy Chalamet. Yeah. So shall I watch that this week? Or does he have to double film it as punishment? It's not punishment to watch two films. <laughs> It is if they're James films. <laughs> I did set you some of the homework. Okay, well, I'll double down. That's fine. Okay, so... Warning, next week's podcast is going to be an hour and 20 yeah, minutes. Have you hours. seen the South Korean award-winning movie, which also comes in colour and also in black and white, available on Netflix, if you wish, to watch it either in colour or black. I love that bit. The fact you can choose to watch it in colour or black and white. That's mental. Isn't it just? They've released it twice in two different versions of it. And what are they, what are the different versions? Colour, black and white. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke, James. That was a joke. English and James is English. <laughs> it's a South Korean movie. The tagline is, act like you own the place. It's classy, it's dark, it's all about class. It's dark, it's funny, it's Hitchcockian. Good word, isn't Ooh, it? Ooh, that was good. Um, and it's called Parasite. I didn't know it was released in black and white as well. Hmm, have you seen it? Yeah. You've seen it? Yeah. Huh. In any case. That doesn't happen very often, it does it? It doesn't happen very often. <laughs> yeah, no. That's very good, but I will watch it in black and white. Watch the black and white version and, and watch uh, Bones and All. Yeah. And then come back and tell us, tell all the listeners and, and, and viewers yeah, actually, what you I, thought of both. Because Parasite won... A Loads. lot of Oscars, didn't it? Lords. Yeah. Such a beautiful microscope on society, I thought. And it's really funny because the, the the title doesn't actually no. kind of take you where you go with it, which I which I love about it. But yeah, no, I'll, I'll happily watch that with pleasure. Fantastic. Fantastic. So there you have it. That's your this week's popcorn pundits. Week twenty two. Beautiful. Beautiful. How can people get in touch with us, gents? Well, you can comment on the uh, on the underside of our YouTube videos. That's correct. Yes, yeah. you can DM us on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Slide in there, baby. You could the popcorn pundits. The popcorn pundits. Yes. You can uh, you can WhatsApp us directly and Facebook. 
Can yeah. Facebook us? We are, I'm expecting a last minute review coming in from one of our listeners. So if he manages to get it in, we might slip it in the end of this review. Yeah. At the end. See what sort of magic we can do with our, with our editing and producing. What, what, you know someone, you, you know there's a review coming in? I do know there's a review coming in. Is that Leo reviewing the beehive? No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> the beehive? It's, 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 it's one half of Tucker TV getting in contact with us about Ghostbusters. Oh, okay, cool. Mm. Beautiful. Yes, and if he didn't do it now, he, he's got to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all you've got to say. And that's about. all you're getting. So we've got, we've got a fantastic horror movie and hopefully some other delights for you next week. Um, just a quick one, television-wise. Yes. I've been watching um, The Three Bodies on Netflix. Right, okay, I don't know what that is. Very good. I'll, I'll come back and tell you about that a little bit next week. Is that the one where it goes through different times? Yes. I've watched that. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Very interesting. So we're going to start introducing this as well, are we? Because then Ever we should, so often. Because we should probably mention The Gentleman next week as well. Then, well, shouldn't we? yes, we should do, shouldn't we? You talk about yourselves again. Hell no. Not in the slightest. <laughs> I'm going I'm to interrupt this with a... Popcorn Pundits. Podcast. Number 22. Adios, amigos. As the clashing socks. Antonio Banderas would say. Yeah, no orange socks today. Mine are kind of orangey, and then his are, what did you call them? Black and yellow, black and yellow. Yeah. What is it? What is it? Is it gold and blue? Oh, yeah, what is it? <laughs> these, these socks have their own Instagram. What are you going to call the Instagram for the socks? Um, are these black the and yellow? The Pundit Pongs. Yeah. 